Hello YouTube, um, this is DG Vanger, and we're here today with the top 8 and top 4 um, Vanguard um, matches from the Just Play Games tournament um, that you've been enjoying the, hopefully you've been enjoying the, um, the rounds of Swiss that have been uploaded beforehand. Uh, today I wanted to do something a bit different and record commentary on both top 8 and top 4. Um, it's something, you know, I want to try out if it, you know, if it goes well and, if, you know, with a bit of a positive feedback, you know, hopefully this will become a bit more of a, uh, a regular thing. Um, I would like, you know, for, first off before we begin, I want to say a bit of a thanks to uh, Just Play Games for allowing me to uh, record at their tournament. Uh, you know, if you're ever in England around uh, Liverpool, definitely uh, consider checking them out. Uh, they've, they've just recently um, moved to a, a, you know, a larger storefront, uh, and they've got a nice, uh, they've got a nice uh, inventory. <coughs> so the top eight match, we've got Kieran, who is using uh, Zodiac Time Beast, and then we've got Alistair, who is uh, using Narukami, particularly the Trigonic Vanquish build. Now, these two matchups uh, interact in a very interesting way. Uh, Zodiac Time Beasts, they have a bit of a drop zone uh, plays with their G guard and their perfect guards. You know, Luru allows you to recycle, so does the grade one, uh, and the perfect guard obviously allows you to uh, utilize cards in the drop zone to get perfect guards back in the hand. So the game started, um, they throw their, van their first grade one vanguards, Alistair's going a fair bit aggro on Kieran, which is probably a good way to deal with uh, Zodiac Time Beasts in the early game in particular. Um, Kieran is responding with aggro in turn. He's also using that opportunity to get uh, his Chrono Jet Dragon G back to his hand. <laughs> Both decks utilize stand triggers as well, so a potential uh, very lucky trigger will actually you know, be very beneficial um, to Kieran, particularly since he's been put on the back foot in this in his first turn. He went for the rear gun on that attack, uh, doesn't get a trigger, and but Narukami did lose a crit, so um, that's something to consider going forward. Um, instead of uh, boosting with uh, the starter, Alistair chooses to utilize its effect to uh, Find a card from the drop zone, which is good. It gets the fun strike going very early on. <coughs> Kieran's not wasting any time. He rides straight to a grade three and, and calls his duplex dragon. That gives him a control aspect, you know, allowing him to tuck Alistair starter back into the bottom of the deck, which, you know, it can mean a lot. Um, the starter does provide some good um, pluses. However, this has given Narukami the opportunity to stride first. Uh, which can be a prob which is going to be a problem for Kieran because he is going to lose his Chrono Dragon, uh, which is a very integral part of uh, Zodiac Time Beast's early game plus engine. Obviously, with cards like um, Transit Dragon and uh, Cruising Dragon, um, you can still go off majorly. Um, unfortunately, since it's Narukami and they do have GB1 first, that's going to be a fair bit difficult just because of the G guards that Narukami have available to them, particularly in P-Dragon. Um, on the first stride, um, Alistair's hit a stand trigger, um, so that, that's a really good play. He's utilizing his, uh, the Thunder Strike on his, uh, on his Vanguard to you know, take care of the, the Chronodran, and Kieran has to make a decision whether to guard or take it to four. He gets a heal trigger, that's a very, um, that's a very fortunate thing. He's able to level things out a bit, and hopefully he should be able to stabilize uh, interesting enough, he chooses to rewrite Chrono Jet G, potentially to build up Soul uh, for an uh, for you know for plays, and we see him go into um, Split Pegasus, which is a very uh, sort of common uh, first stride uh, play. He is uh, using Split Pegasus to flip another Pegasus in his G zone face up. That will provide a blanket plus one thousand to his front row. Um, Transit Dragon. He's called two of those to the back row. Those are very good units uh, in regards to allowing him to stabilize as both will give him cards in hand. 
he's cooled down pretty much all his hand. He's kept one, uh, kept one back. I think that is a perfect guard, which will come in handy in the turns to follow against Arakami because they are able to uh, push hard with uh, power and critical, starting pretty much from second stride onwards. Um, obviously, Alistair's utilizing his MP Dragon, and that will take care of the immediate threat of um, of MP Dragon. Uh, well, MP Dragon will take care of um, the cruising, so that will limit the stand trigger plays. And since uh, Kieran had two or less, he would also he also now has to retire an additional rear guard on top of the retiring bind from the effect. So he chooses to retire the transit dragon. So he's, you know, he's minus on that regard. And see, because he was unable to have, well, he unable to have a rear guard that he could utilize stand trick with. Um, the pressure, there's a lot of pressure now off of Alistair. Um, and Kieran's first try, unfortunately, seems to have just fizzled out. Um, we're going into the fun strike four play from Sparking. Obviously, they're a good skill for you know, uh, keeping consistency going. And what we go into in this situation? I think in a lot of uh, in a lot of cases, probably V Buster, just because um, the the quad drive and critical, the blanket power to the front row, and he's just able to continue controlling uh, Kieran's field to a ridiculous degree. He's using the grade one to draw a card. I think he soul blasted two there. You only need to soul blast one for that. Um, so a small misplay. Uh, probably might make a difference. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, he's called the sound trigger now, and again a very important card for Narukami's playstyle, uh, allowing you to basically refund resources and cards because of the five k that um, that V Bust is giving. That, uh, that 6k is now going to be able to hit for an 11. So again, it's just continual pressure on Kieran, which is going to be very hard to guard against. Obviously, he does have the perfect guard, but he has to drop a 10k shield for it, which isn't the most ideal. Now, Akami hit a draw trigger on the drive check, so you know, that's uh, it'll give Kieran a bit of breathing space, certainly only taking one damage from that rearguard attack and he might be able to come back and fight although he has to do a dirty strife he's got to go into the uh, into the gear next here obviously one of the most powerful cards in the g-zone unless he chooses to go into something else actually he might want to oh he's gone into the avenir phoenix i think the plan here is to obviously uh, build up a field again and uh, try and maintain some advantage checks the top three off uh, off cruising dragon and, and hits a heal trigger on that so he's able to add that g guard into his hand have an phoenix now because of the number of units face up in the g zone he's able to call a maximum of well he's able to call pretty much a full field uh, unfortunately um all of those were triggers well most of them were triggers the cruising dragon is only a, only the really uh, good column out of those Unfortunately, and he's interestingly enough, he's decided to call those uh, triggers out. I think it was in t an anticipation for the uh, MP Dragon play, so he had uh, targets to retire, so he didn't uh, have to uh, kill his own important units. Although, might have still left the. Uh, it might have been a slightly better play. Pers well, personally, I might have just left. I would have called the triggers maybe keeping the heal in deck and keeping the cruising dragon just in case you hit that stand trigger although I'm not too sure how many stand triggers are still in the deck at this point and after checking so many triggers off Avenir the uh, likelihood it is so low so maybe that play was slightly more efficient although either way um, there's still only one attack left to guard and it's not got a lot of power on it and obviously Kieran cannot use the effect of cruising dragon but he is able to use transit dragon to get a draw and he has hit a perfect guard off that so that can potentially save him in the situation going forward. Obviously, Thunder Strike 4 from uh, Sparking allows um, to counter charge or soul charge to gain um, a pretty uh, a pretty impressive uh, 
pretty impressive down to Jensen. He's, oh, he chose to counter charge instead. Okay, instead. Of, well, he's, he's, cho he's chosen to soul charge instead of counter charging. Um, I'm not entirely sure how that would have played out. Obviously, it's a small tournament, and it's not a major. It's not a major event. Kieran was our head judge of the day, but he was, you know, very busy focusing on on the game and seeing a more uh, higher to uh, in a more higher sort of uh, stake situation. Perhaps um, Narakami would not have been allowed to take back the uh, the counter charge play, particularly after the skills had already been resolved and the cost for his stride had already been paid. Um, however, back to the game at hand, V Bust uh, is um, again powering up the rearguards to a uh, you know a very powerful degree. Um, the Thunder Strike five on that crew too, again, just uh, it's just power on top of power. It's a very impressive. Uh, it is a very impressive engine when it works. Um, Alistair is an Arakami deck overall. It uh, it performed fairly well uh, throughout the day. Obviously, it um. Obviously, it's made it to top eight. Um, obviously, this match is deciding whether it will make it to top four. The quadruple drive reveals a crit and a heal trigger. Very timely heal trigger as well because both of them were on four damage. So, Alistair is going to be able is going to be able to heal one damage, uh, which is going to uh, give him very good longevity. Also, very timely heal trigger there. And obviously the pressure from this rear guard with crit and power, uh, Kieran has had to expend most of his hand to guard it. Obviously, he's been able; to, he was able to just about keep the stride forward in hand, and now he's going for the gear next play. Even with all the cards being bound, uh, he's able to recycle his perfect gun. But that is a double-edged sword. He is giving himself more defense, but overall, he is giving uh, Alistair more offense because those cards do count towards the Thunder Strike. He's going right in with the Vanguard, just smacking in with that 26 column. Alistair obviously has to... Oh, he's had to throw out a lot to guard this. Obviously, he's used uh, two Impede Dragons at this point. Um, so he's unable to G-guard anymore, because four G-guards are face up in the G-zone. Uh, Kieran's used the effective gear, uh, of gear next to bot deck two. Unfortunately, that timely heal trigger did save Alistair as he was unable to guard the restand. If Kieran had hit one more crit, that game might have been over there and then. So it is not looking good for Kieran now as Alistair did survive that gear groovy turn. It just depends whether he can stride or not. Again, he's using the Thunder Strike 4. He's paid the cost for stride. And he's gone into VMAX. There we go. Was, it, was it Vmax? Oh, he's he's gone into the original Vanquisher uh, stride. Sometimes, you know, sometimes I forget the names or the specific names, especially when there are a lot of different versions of, uh, of strides. So, again, first time doing a commentary, so if it's a bit clunky, you know, bear with me. <laughs> I'm still fairly new at this. Uh, obviously, at this point, there's a lot of cards bound. You can't see how many exactly, but there's a lot. And it is pretty dangerous for Kieran right now. He only has a perfect guard to really protect him, and he's had to no guard the Vanguard, hoping for that heal trigger play, um, which is quite. It's just going to be quite damaging. He got this. Um, Narakomi got the sun trigger as well, so I doubt even if Kieran would be able to survive this, it would be hard to guard these next two attacks. And yes, so game one is over. Narakami takes it going to be going into game two in a few minutes again i would like to thank uh, just play games for the opportunity to allow me to film at the event um saying a bit about the about the players al says narakami deck is very oh uh, it's you know it's a fairly standard build um there's not too much different there that i've not seen other uh, others play i would say his play style is a bit different in particular his choice of first stride um, as you notice in game one, he prefers to, instead of using the V Buster, he goes into the Fighters Collection um, stride from the G Guard Fighters Collection set, which is a very interesting, uh, which is a very interesting choice. Both of them, you know, like V Buster, both of them have Thunder Strike, 
the trade-off is basically a, uh, a soul and a flip for a uh, basically a, a counter blast instead. Uh, Alistair doesn't seem to worry too much. Uh, doesn't seem to need to worry too much about resources because of the uh, the Thunder Strike Four of uh, Sparking. So I think that's the reason why he prefers it. And obviously, the more you power that card, the more you can fuel your Thunder Strike in the early game, the more effective that Fighter's Collection Stride can be. Uh, instead of uh, just retiring one unit uh, with its skill, it can retire two. Maybe even free if um, the opponent has bound a lot of cards in the end of the game. So the theory behind that is uh, is quite sound. It saves a flip, and it, you know it does save space in the G zone as well. Uh, we're back on to game two now. Um, again, Alistair is able to ride his unit. Kieran has to ride a perfect guard, and he's going aggro with the transit. No triggers so far, and Alistair no guards. Losing a perfect guard and a grade two. The perfect guard for uh, Narakami is a very interesting unit. Um, it helps with the advantage engine. And Alistair's holding nothing back at the moment. He's got his full aggro. He's got a board full of grade twos. One of those being a chatter, one of the best cards that Narakami has access to. Obviously, because Kieran's on a 6k grade one, that chatter is still able to hit him, forcing the guard from him, basically. Which is a very, very, very tough play. <laughs> Perhaps knowing that, perhaps knowing that, and maybe anticipating a, a potential chatter of play, the 6k may, might not have been the best ride. He's choosing to leave those units on the board and attack the Vanguard purely. He was um, Alistair was able to defend. There's not much pressure on Alistair at the moment, so he's able to uh, basically stay on grade two, and he's just going to keep poking at Kieran and potentially. I think his aim here is to try and get that chatter off for that, um, mainly for the draw, and it does enable the thunder strike. Although at the same time, the grade two now, the other grade two now, Akami, the thunder strike five, is a again a very powerful card. You can't just simply get rid of it. You do have to pay a price, and that price is a card from your drop zone into the bind zone, which again fuels the thunder strike. But it is a very important card to get um, to gain control uh, to get rid of. Um, Especially in the early game when, you know, pressure is on um, if you rush. Obviously, Kieran had the 10k, but the Chatter is still able to swing. Um, he's prioritizing getting the Chatter and then the rearguard. He's then choosing to bind it, uh, to bind a card from the drop zone and attack it. And obviously, no guards this, so he gets a draw trigger, puts it on the grade 3. And no stand trigger, so he can't pressure the Vanguard anymore. And this is going to be interesting again. This is the, first, this is the second time in the match um, Kieran has... Um, Surrendered first stride to uh, Alistair, giving Narakami um, first stride or access to GB before um, before you is always a very dangerous play, purely because um, it makes MP Dragon live. Uh, MP Dragon being you know the core the core of their defense, um, so a lot of players would prefer to stride first against Narakami just so you can pressure them before having to worry about the. Do you got access? Oh, he's using a Luru to only just put one card back, being the heal trigger. You can only put, you can put uh, up to two cards back. You would just have to sacrifice the 5k that you would get for the Luru skill, but it does its job. It saved the heal trigger from being bound from skills. Kieran chooses to no guard, although since there are enough cards bound. Uh, that Thunder Strike is going to be able to clear his remaining units, which is a very damaging uh, play. Again, further fuels his Thunder Strike, gets that Thunder Strike 7, so uh, Alistair is going to be hitting that quad drive on the next stride. And the Impede Dragon is now live um, with a heal trigger expected in the hand. In this situation, what will Kieran go into for his first drive into game 2? There are a lot of interesting options here. He could even potentially go for a gear next play, although that is not optimal at all. He decides to go instead for the Avenir Phoenix again, first stride. He's going to time leap a card from his hand with Chrono Jet G stride skill. Obviously, it comes uh, GB set 14. The the um, the array of utility and cards that. Uh, 
Zodiac Time Beast get. It's going to excel them to a ridiculous level. That's Kieran's uh, opting for a very sort of aggressive play. He's called his Great Freeze Down. He's going for the Chatura uh, with his first attack. Will Alistair decide to guard? He's thinking about it. He decides to uh, let that go through. Also, is now going into the MP Dragon using its uh, skill, obviously. Uh, in that situation, would he only need to attack? Uh, I don't know. How is MP Dragon worded? I I believe like in that situation, Kieran would have only needed to retire one. I'm not entirely sure about that. Maybe he only, he only would have needed to retire two. But even still, he was it was still able to get his transit off, and now he's using the skill of Avenir to uh, call a full build and the GB3 is now active so those cards will be gaining uh, additional power and meaning they can hit the Vanguard at this point those heal that heal triggering column now it is a 14k and obviously those sand triggers those will not be able to trigger because they were called from the deck not the hand unfortunately uh, Kieran doesn't have any open Calaglass so he can't even use Pegasus as a skill uh, even though he's able to push Alistair to 4 the fact that he's had to call 2 heal triggers from this deck and you know, basically turning those off from uh, being able to be used uh, to recover damage is actually quite harmful. And the loss of the stand triggers as well, um, as you know, you're unable to call them from hand. Again, quite a damaging play. He's uh, obviously Alistair's just motoring ahead, getting that thunder strike uh, even higher, going into the V Buster, which is live uh, with uh, with power and critical. Uh, the front row gaining the blanket 5k and he's utilizing the skill of grade one and then he's using rock climb to further retire and buy and stuff and get more power on that which will again that will be a 16k column when it hits uh, on its own which is uh, which is mighty impressive he's using the howl rod to counter charge and give further power to his rear guards and then i think is he going to move it into soul or he's just gonna leave it there okay at this point the front row has gained a feather power ah yes he is going he is going for the hard rod play to fuel his soul again he's usually he's used the skill of the grade one to soul blast two i'm not sure he was entirely aware that you that you only need to soul blast one through draw um i'm thinking the circumstances it made too much of a difference but um Overpaying the cost, I'm not entirely sure how that would work out in a ruling situation. Okay, Kieran is able to perfect guard it. He still has a bit of breathing space for the fact that he only has two damage, but this quad drive is going to reveal a crit. Interestingly enough, he is using the uh, the crit elemental crit that um, can obviously give you uh, more cost for your stride at the sacrifice of not being able to just guard with itself straight up for a 10k shield. Very interesting play. I only ever really have seen uh, Brave utilising that card as they run less criticals. Uh, well, they run a lot of crits but less grade threes overall and they play that with a very light hand in general so they have to kind of uh, substitute that. Although going into set 14 that might be a bit different. Kieran has gone into the gear next again. Very standard second stride for Zodiac Time Beast. And he's time leapt into a Transit Dragon, obviously wanting to get more pluses off. The MP Dragon isn't going to net Alistair much dra uh, value at the moment purely because the rearguard situation for Kieran is fairly even to uh, Alistair's. So the MP isn't going to get much value off. Kieran's getting the perfect card back from his drop zone. Again, that does fuel the fun strike, so that is a bit of a worry. He's going to swing in with the Chrono Spin, boosted by the Transit. Um, what will Alistair do in a situation? Will he go to 5? Or will he uh, choose to no guard it? It looks like he's thinking about guarding it, although the gear next is going to be swinging in with a lot of power. And he's guarding and intercepting. Kieran's able to get the draw. That, um will now allow him to swing in with the vanguard at a 26. What will Alistair do in this situation? I think he's deciding to ease no guarding it. Kieran hits the crit. He only hits one crit. He hits the heal trigger though, so he's able to survive on this next damage. And he got two defensive triggers on that play as well, so his vanguard is now up to 21,000 power, which is going to be 
make things a lot easier for Alistair to guard. That was a very lucky heal trigger again. Both games, Alistair's hitting the heal triggers when you need to. Luck is a factor in this game sometimes, um, but overall the general sort of play that Alistair has been showing has been overall the, you know, the more efficient. He's obviously knows the Zodiac time use matchup well, so he's going for the advantage plays. Uh, Kieran has conceded um, first try to him both games as well, which is never good in the Maokami matchup. Uh, just because the amount of advantage. Kieran is going to be going in with the uh, Pegasus, only able to check top two and only calls a crit off the top of it. Uh, I'm not sure if it was good to call anything in that situation because that would that would just further fuel from the strike. And what is he going into? Is he going into the uh, looks like he's going into the D max. Uh, so again, that's going with all the cards bound. VMAX is GB3. It's going to provide a lot of power uh, to Alistair's front row. Kieran's in a very tight situation at the moment. Alistair again, you know, paying the soul blast two and he doesn't need to to draw a card. Although the um, the aim, the, the 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 goal overall is reached. He's got a full field. All those is going to be gaining a lot of power as well. It's going to be really tough for Kieran to turn the situation around. Although his hand and his damage at 4, he still has a good chance of surviving into the next turn. He's going to be swinging with the Thunderstrike first. The Thunderstrike does have the option to hit multiple rearguards at this point as well if, he cho if, uh, if Alistair had chosen. Uh, Kieran getting the defensive crit, uh, which is a very important play. <laughs> Kieran obviously has the perfect guard what saved up. Perfect, Triple drive, full reveal, a draw trigger. trigger. So no stands. No stand. yeah. Alistair is going to attack yeah, and right, Kieran will perfect guard that as well, obviously being on 5. The amount of power is going to be hard for even the strongest G guards uh, Gear Chronicle have to uh, survive that. Now what will Kieran do? He's got the means to stride. He's probably going to go into another gear next and try to close the, this game out on the stride. Because having to face gear next over and over is event. It is going to be the winning image for. It is the winning. It is the current winning image for Gear Chronicle, allowing them to just basically just keep pummeling uh, the opponent with massive attacks. Although against control, um, the restand. Is still strong, but not as strong because uh, you you find it harder overall to maintain a good board, which you know, is the sort of um, trade-off that Zodiac yeah, Time Beasts have. They have very powerful release standards, but still the Dex Core principle is around a very strong rear guard as well as a massive swinging vanguard. Um, Gear Next obviously uh, becomes more efficient the more rear guards you have, as you can choose to put those to the bottom of the deck instead of minusing from your hand. So a lot of gear, uh, gear Chronicle players will choose to bomb the deck their resources, their boosters on the field instead of having to manage from hand, obviously making the guarding for next turn a lot easier. So the gear next play is going in, and what will Alistair do? He doesn't have that many cards in hand, so this is going to be a very tough turn for him to guard. Overall, I think he does have the he does have a perfect guard. He's had to make it one to pass. And Kieran breaks through with a draw trigger. What will Alistair check? He checks the heal trigger! This is the second time this game that Alistair has checked the heal trigger on the first Chrono Jet attack. It is, that is a miracle. He has been saved twice on the gear next turn. And now it is looking very difficult for Kieran to be able to uh, close the game out because that 5k is going to be making a difference. He's going to use the skill to call cards. Got the Obstinancy Ox, that's a very important card. There's a lot of power going to be on there because there's a lot of cards face up in that G zone now. Uh, he's unable to guard though, so we do move on to game three. Very, very um, interesting end there. If Alistair would have been able to guard the rest of those attacks, however, however likely or unlikely, 
His next turn would have been a finisher. Kieran just able to have it, just enough power and was able to wear down Narakami's resources just enough to the point where the gear next and the pressure from the rear guards was just enough. <sighs> going into game three, this is going to be a very interesting finisher. I'm not entirely sure how the final move is going to be. Um, it could be that just both players, well, one of the other players might brick, and the game could end fairly quickly. Or the match could keep going on. He wants to use this dice. And I want to use these dice <laughs> to make a ruling. Kieran's doing some weird stuff with the dice. I think he is checking okay. uh, with the judge to see. Well, he's checking with uh, one of the with the other judges over there at the day whether um, he's able to use that um, that dice for going first. I think as long as you know it's a dice and it's uh, there's no uh, there's obviously nothing really done to it. Um, any sort of dice is uh, allowed to be used for a, uh, for a roll check for going first or second. Kieran's opting to put two cards back out of his hand. Alistair's keeping four. Uh, obviously Alistair feels like he has a good hand to keep. Kieran has a good hand as well. Having that Chrono Spin for that solid 10k and the Rewind Tiger for additional aggro, he draws the Chrono Jet, so his hand is looking pretty solid going first. Um, here we go, game 3. Obviously pretty standard openings. How aggressive will Alistair go on this first turn? How eager is he to close the first game, uh, to close this last game out? Well, he's using the Mighty Bolt to grab that important star uh, sparking from his deck. Obviously discarding the Vanquisher that he doesn't need. Interesting that he chooses to use the original Vanquisher instead of the um, play. That I see a lot of Narakami's using, which is the Dragonic Descendant Sigma, uh, which on rear guard basically acts as like a bit of a flogel sort of play. Obviously, though, at this point, Rewind Tiger is a, again a double edged sword as it does fuel the Thunder Strike for Narukami. Uh, Kieran is able to aggress back, but that draw trigger is going to keep Alistair at one damage going into this turn. Alistair seems to still be in a very strong position. That Mike Bolt's still there, is still on the field, so he's going to be able to provide boost to the Chatterer, which is a uh, very important thing that will make uh, guarding for Kieran very tough. Alistair's just going into the Vanguard. He's no guarding it. He gets nothing, but then he will guard the Chatterer as he values. Well, he doesn't want Alistair to hit that draw trigger. He is going to decide to stall on grade 2 and he's going to go for the rearguard crush play trying to counter rush and try to clear the important units off the field he does but he wasn't able to clear both front row units so those cards are still going to be a threat that mighty bolt is going to be able to provide boost for uh, additional units that Kieran has to call uh, for Alistair has to call and he has another chatter which is going to be very tough for Kieran to have to deal with uh, his only a 9k but he hits the heal trigger so that 9k is still able to hit and Kieran has to go with two cards to be able to protect himself from the Chatterer and things are not looking good he is going to go into the Sabri so as I've said did not uh, re-ride a grade 2 so but since he did not call uh, since he did not stride a Zodiac Time BC he is not going to be able to utilize Chrono Jet G's stride skill and he is uh, missed out on the stand trigger, uh, which would have netted him another attack, and he's just going all in with the with his rear guards at the moment. Which um, I don't know. The Sabreeze is sort of a stabilizing card, so I'm not sure whether just going purely for the Vanguard would have been the best play. Obviously, the um, 
the pressure that um, Narukami is putting on Kieran at the moment is obviously great. Um, but I think um, trying to alleviate that pressure, uh, irregardless of the fact that um, Al said they'd have the, again the grade one, allows him to draw. Um, it's not looking too good for Kieran at the moment. He's having to drop a lot of cards to guard. I don't think he's going to actually be able to guard the Vanguard at all with his hand. So Alistair gets a heal. If he gets a crit here, he's able to close the game out. Here's is not, but does Kieran have enough in hand with that heal trigger? I don't think he does. He only has 10k shield overall, and he's able to. He has to concede, and that is the match. Alistair taking it 2-1 uh, against Zodiac Time Beast. Um, very well played by both players. Uh, join us again tomorrow where we go into the top.